Hey, Philosophlix here, back in the classroom. I just finished my last lesson, and I'm hiding from children staring out the windows on the opposite side of the building so that they don't spot me while I make this video. So moving on. Um, this video is going to be on lesson types. And what I mean by lesson types is how I categorize elementary school lessons as an ALT. Um, I have four categories. Question and answers. Statements words and just miscellaneous and I'm going to talk about it more in detail I'm going to show the blackboard and everything right now I'm still a little I'm, I'm, I'm hiding a little bit so um just want to talk a little bit more um this video will be aimed again towards aspiring ALTs and struggling ALTs most likely in the first year second year ALTs you're probably like okay well this is all easy stuff and of course elementary school only because I don't teach middle school and yeah can't help that, but knowing that if you're gonna, if you're still in the aspiring phase where you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be an LT, the odds that you get elementary school is pretty high. So, you know, just just in case, watch the video. It, it, it might be useful. You know. Um. Don't know if it's safe yet. I'm just just wondering. Um. So yeah, I I guess I'll just tell you this vid. Oh right, the le uh, these lesson types. They're um. What I had in mind uh, when I made this, or when I decided to make this video, is that it's going to help people make games for their lessons. The hardest part about a lesson is making the game, in my opinion, because you have to be creative, you have to make every game somehow, I guess, unique with the lesson. Not, it doesn't have to be like unique, it has to make sense. And that's difficult because you have all these factors and stuff, and so I'm going to you know, make more and more videos that will help you understand, like, in certain situations you should do this and this. I'm going to talk about, oh, what if your class is like this? Or what if this happens and all that stuff? There's a lot of stuff coming. But this is just to get your feet wet a little bit, right? Okay, I don't hear children, so I'm going to go to the board. All right. Wait, wait. Okay, lesson types. You got one, two, three, four. Uh, one being the most common, like 90% of your lessons, down to four being the least common. So... I'm going to talk as fast as I can because I don't want to make this video too long. I just realized there's a lot I want to talk about. So let's just jump in. Q&A. These are interview format questions, right? You got someone asking a question, someone answering. But then there's two types. Multiple answers and specific answers. So what do I mean by this? Um, Multi-answers. Here's an example. What fruit do you like? Very simple. And you have a lot of options for your answers, right? You can say, I like bananas, I like apples, I like oranges, I like lemons. And so when you teach a lesson like this, you'll teach a full question, how to answer, and a bunch of answers to choose from. And it gives you a lot you have to teach, but if you teach in a rhythm, it'll be, you know, nice and easy. And it gives you a lot to work with. And so these lessons are actually, even though you have the most that you have to teach in this type of lesson, it's almost like the easiest type of lesson to teach. Because, for instance, underneath multi-answer, you have the specific answer. And an example of this is, what's your name? My name is uh, Philosophlix. You know, you have one answer. So, um, when you teach a lesson like this, you have less to work with. It makes making a game for this harder. It makes teaching it shorter, meaning you have to fill in time more. Um, of course, it depends on your class. So that's the judgment call. So yeah, um, it's really important to know that these are different and how they differ. Then number two, statements. Uh, these don't have any natural incurred interactions like Q&As. These are like, I like dogs. I don't like cats. I can swim. I can't cook. Just statements. And these are obviously way shorter in terms of the, it's not a question, but the statements are short. I like this, I don't like this, I can do this, I can't do this. But they at least still have multiple answers. You can teach them, right? You can be like, I can, and then dance, cook, swim, a jump rope, whistle. I don't, you can choose whatever you want to say. Um, it's up to you. But that's statements. Um, it's more difficult to make a game for statement lessons than Q&As. And it's... It's still pretty short, but you can add in more words to teach them to make the lesson longer, so it kind of helps, um, you know, at least the lesson part. The games are still harder to make than any Q&A uh, type. But then you got 
three words and words is literally just that words just words and uh you won't actually kind of find this in a lesson plan if you get one on what to teach because it's more of a judgment call if you want to do this and i did this recently for fourth graders because their lesson was like um what was it he is a and then you got to teach occupations and occupations is difficult there's a lot of new words that you have to teach them and they're all difficult for fourth graders to learn and so what i did was instead of teaching them a full question a full answer and a bunch of difficult words which would take up a lot of time give you less time to play games just break it down into two lessons teach them the words first or something and then the next lesson teach them the question and answer and then they'll fill in the words they learned before and it would be doubled as a review it's pretty good it's useful it's not in the lesson book at times but it's something i would recommend doing and then miscellaneous miscellaneous just means there's probably a lesson i forgot and i'm just going to put it in miscellaneous so if you think or you have a lesson that you know is in the miscellaneous category that I don't ever talk about, please tell me in the comments below and I'll make a video on it to the best I can of how I would teach it and all that. Um, but yeah, so those are the four categories. It's, like I said, important to know because in certain categories you have more to work with. It's easier to make games. Uh, Q&A, for instance, interview games. They are God, right? These are amazing. Uh, give some kids some cards to use. For instance, uh, today I actually taught age. And so the question was, how old are you? The answer was, I am something. This is kind of between multi and specific, depending on how you teach the lesson. I think I taught it multi because the way I made the game, well, okay, the lesson is specific. The game was multi. So specific Lesson was like, there's only two ages in the class. They're either the like 11 or they're 12, something like that. But then the game, I gave them all... Oh, you know what? Here, I still have the... Oops, okay, here we go. I gave every child three cards. And they're... What they had to do was go around, find some, some random person walking around too, and they had to do John Ken, which is uh, rock, paper, scissors. And the winner gets to choose one card and one of their cards and change them. So let's say, here, I'm going to set down another three cards. Let's say this is the opponent's hand, right? Wow, all fours. You know what, that's a bad example. Uh, okay, here's a five. Okay, so the objective of this game is to be older, right? And so in your hand, you have three numbers. So you want to make them add into the biggest number you can by the end of the game. But you can only have three cards at once. And so when you win rock, paper, scissors, you are allowed to change one card of your choosing for one of their cards. So then you get to do this. And after this has happened, then the winner gets to ask, how old are you? And then the other person replies, well, let's see, four plus four plus one. So you have nine. So I'm nine years old. Then they ask you in return, how old are you? And then you do, you know, five plus four plus six, that's 15. So I'm 15 years old. And then they say goodbye. And then they find a, a different partner and they repeat over and over again. That means that it's multi-answer because every time you interact with someone else, you have to do one exchange first, your answer changes, and you're a variety of different ages. It helps them practice numbers. It helps them not get bored of the game because there's uh, different answers they can choose from. And I, oh, I forgot. I threw in some fun cards. Oh, here they are. I threw these in. My uh, drawings are horrible. I'm sorry, but um, these are baby cards. And... I only put in three throughout the whole class. The class was like 30, 35 kids. This is a huge class. And um, three of them had these. And what happens when you hold one of these is, let's say I'm holding it like this. The person holding this will always be one years old. No matter what the other two cards is, they'll be one years old. And so it's kind of like a penalty, you know. Um, if you win, you can trade it off to someone else. So before the game ends, if you're holding one of these, you don't 
you're going to be one years old. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. They're like, oh, avoid the baby, avoid the baby. This is just one idea of Q&A um, games that you can do. Uh, there are general guidelines that I want to teach in other videos. The video, or this video, is going to be lesson types. So Q&A statements, words, miscellaneous. I'm going to make a video on each of these individually. So in the future, I'm going to probably do a Q&A first. So in Q&A lessons, games should look like this. Follow these guidelines. The lesson should look like this. They're going to be generally like this. And depending if your class is this big, you should do this. And so there's a lot I want to talk about. But in this video, I'm just going to end it here for now. Um... Here, let me turn this around. All right, sorry, I kind of ranted because I was excited to show off the game I made. Very simple. I just got a bunch of cards, wrote numbers on them. Bam, finish. Preparation finished. Kids had a great time. They enjoyed themselves. Um, so, you know, you don't have to do something over the top and difficult to have a fun lesson. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to mention. So, once again, if there's anything you want me to talk about, Leave it in the comments below. If you like the video, hit the like. Subscribe if you want to follow me. And then hopefully learn more about being an ALT and what it takes and things that you should think about and blah, blah, blah. And of course, I'm going to make some more fun videos unrelated to ALT stuff. I just work five days a week, so it's kind of hard to find time for that. But I, I'll, I'll do my best. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.